Like, we can't predict it. We don't know what tomorrow holds. That's why you have to live in the moment. Live every day like it's your last day. If I told you guys, and you knew for a fact it was true, that today is your last day, you will live it to the fullest. Man, that's how we all have to live. We have to live like today is our last day. Now, the bright side to this is, yes, this brother had a traumatic brain injury, could not take care of himself. Uh, he couldn't even stay in his home because uh, he would have episodes of violence, of aggression. And the doctor said this was out of frustration. They said inside his spirit knew what it wanted to do, knew what it wanted to be, knew what it could be. But his body, his brain didn't agree with the spirit. And so whatever his spirit was, it couldn't manifest what it needed to be in the physical. And that's cause of frustration and he would become aggressive and violent. Now this is a, 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 a tall guy and a strong muscular guy, man. He was, uh, I think he's like 6'4", stayed in shape. And so uh, even if all of his uh, faculties were intact, he was a strong guy. But now his faculties are compromised and uh, he probably can't control his strength, doesn't know his own strength. His filter is gone. So he's super aggressive. He's super strong because he has no conscience. He has no filter. So he's super aggressive. Um, the second lesson I learned just from that is they said this brother was a devout Christian was a deacon involved in the church heavily. Never cursed, never drank, never smoked. Uh, just a good guy, people, people thought. And not saying he wasn't. But the impression is and was he, he was good, he was a good guy. But when he had this brain injury, he would curse like a sailor. Under my, he would curse everybody out. Um, curse her out, curse the kids out, be aggressive with the kids. Under my, curse like every other word was a curse word. I'm talking about some some horrific curse words that hit you in the gut. He was ruthless with it. They said, but he never cursed before. Devout Christian. The doctor said he cursed so much now after the brain injury because when all his faculties were there, he suppressed it. So, man, that made me think, man, like he suppressed this when he was so-called normal, but now he's cussing like a sailor. When his ego is gone, when his filter is gone, He's cursing like a sailor. So that was deep inside of him. He was suppressing that. And I used to think, I was like, just as people, when we say we don't do certain things or when we say we've overcome certain things, do we truly not want to do those things? Or have we truly overcome those things? Or are we just simply suppressing them? We just... Pushing, pushing them down, pushing them down into us, pushing them down. But it's still there. It's still something we struggle with. It's still something we want to do, but we're suppressing it. Man, that, that just made me think, man, about my, my own life. Have I overcome some things? Do I not desire to do some things? Or am I suppressing them? Well, it was obvious that this brother was suppressing, uh, cursing. Now, the violence, I don't know if he was suppressing or that was coming from frustration. And I can see that happening when inside, you know who you are, know who you can be, but your body and your, your brain is not cooperating. 
I can see that that spark of frustration. So I don't know if the violence was a form of suppression, but the cussing, the cussing definitely was, man. They, they say he cussed very well, uh, but when he was he was normal, he did not cuss. So, what is normal, right? When he was suppressing stuff, when he had an ego, and we all have an ego, our ego will say, don't do this. Our ego will say, do this. His ego was removed. Our, our ego is a filter. Whether bad, good, or indifferent, it's a filter. And uh, so when people say, let go of the ego, you know, I don't know if that's... that's uh, that's so that's that's always good to have no ego. I don't think we should uh, be led by the ego all the time. I think we got to manage it. Um, but you know, to have no ego is for me to have no filter, and to tell you what I really think about you. Yeah, I don't know if that's always good. And that's where he was. He he uh, he would cut deep with his words to the point, man, he would bring the kids to tears, bring her to tears. And listen, man, that's, that's not his fault, you know? So I'm not pointing any fingers, I'm not judging. I'm just letting you know what was going on and the lesson I learned and something we can all learn. So something, that, that's something we gotta look into, brothers. Like, are you suppressing something that you think you have no desire to do or you think you've overcome. So I, I've i been against, uh, just been a rule of mine, not to date women involved in relationships, uh, especially married women. It's just never been my thing. I have gotten caught up uh, prior to that uh, three times and all these women lied to me. Uh, they lied about being involved with someone and it eventually came out and the relationship ended. And you know, that's a lesson for you guys too. Women, women cheat, women lie. Um, where they start slipping is when feelings get involved. They, they start slipping, they start getting careless, or I don't say careless, they start not caring uh, when feelings get involved. But before feelings are involved, they're on point. Yeah, they're real sharp with the with the lying and the cheating. Uh, they can break off from you quick and be where they're supposed to be and be on time, be on schedule. When feelings get involved, that's when they get careless or not stop caring, you know, uh, stop being so punctual with their time. And that's when things start to come out. And man, that's happened to me prior to that. This, that's happened to me three three times. Women have lied and it's come out. Now, I don't know if I was wrong. Maybe I was still wrong for making an exception with this woman because of the situation she was in. Should I have said, regardless of that situation, like this brother was never going to be back home. They were never going to be intimate. Uh, she had moved him down to a uh, rehabilitation nursing home center <clears throat> in Houston. Actually, the Woodlands. That's a community next to Houston. And uh, maybe I was still wrong. You know, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm on the fence with that. If I was still wrong for engaging or continuing a relationship with her, even though uh, the situation was what it was. So, this is the thing, man. We get into a relationship. You know, we spend a lot of time with one another. And, you know, at this point, it's obvious where the money is coming from. You know, it's coming from her husband. And, uh, his money has purchased these cars. His money has purchased these properties uh, and, and set them up. Man, beautiful, beautiful estate outside and inside. 
but she had this pompous attitude, this, uh, I don't know, man, this arrogant attitude. And I'm very selective about saying or using the word arrogant because sometimes we say arrogant less confidence, but this was arrogance. She would throw the materialistic things like in my face, man. Like I told you what happened in the beginning, the first date. And uh, it was always mentioning materialistic things. Like if I came to visit her and uh, say I need to go make a, a run, you know, and uh, she wanted me to come back, you know, or I had to make a store run or whatever. I mean, I got my, my own ride, right? She was like, you could take my ride. Like, now nah, my ride's good. I got my own ride. Yeah, I, I mean, at the time I had to think the Infinity uh, G35. Um, it was only, you know, a year, maybe a year old. Cool ride, clean. Now, you know, luxury wise, it wasn't on the level of her Range Rover or her Jag. But hey, man, I'm good. You know, you can't, you can't, uh, I don't know if you try to call that sunning or, or, uh, I don't know, man. It's, it's just like reverse roles. You know, men, we let women ride our, drive our cars all the time. Like, baby, you could drive, you know, you know, some women we're pursuing or dating or whatever. You know, that's the thing for us to let the woman drive, you know, to put her in, in a certain mindset, right?